Okay, we're going to talk about using the distance and midpoint formula here. And um, first thing we need to talk about is what a segment bisector is. So anytime you see the term bisector, it means to cut in half. So if I have, say, segment A, B, and I bisect it with, say, line L, put some arrows on the end there, so this is line L, um, that means it cuts that in half. We're going to say it kind of it cuts it in half at point P there. That is the midpoint of that segment. So this is line L is a segment bisector. All right. So that would that would mean that AP is congruent to PB. It does not mean that, let's say I put a point here, call it X, and this point here and call it Y. It does not mean that XP is congruent to YP. Those aren't necessarily congruent because L bisects AP or AB doesn't mean that the opposite is true, AB bisects L. We don't know that. So this is all we can conclude from that. Okay. Right, so that's a segment bisector. Now, um, we call this the midpoint. Uh, a segment bisector, anything can bisect a segment. So let's once again say we have AB, and we'll call this point M. A point could bisect a segment. A ray could bisect a segment. Okay, AM is congruent to M to B. Um, a line can bisect a segment. So if we continue that that out there and called this line L just like we did over here. Hey, anything can bisect the segment and cut it in half. Any anything judge a ray or a point or a line there. Okay, now having that, we're going to move into what's called the midpoint formula. And so what I want to do is I want to find the midpoint of this segment. And once again we'll call it segment A B. And I'm going to label some points here. Point A is at the ordered pair negative 8, negative 2. And point B is at the point 6, 4. Now with that, um, we could find the midpoint of this by just doing a little, um, a little rise and run. So if you think um, from uh, a negative 2 to 4 on the, on the y-axis, that means we go up a grand total of one, two, three, four, five, six, and we go over from negative eight to six. We go over a grand total of, I'm not going to count them out that time, but it's 14. Okay, so if I want the midpoint, I could just choose to go up three, half of this, one, two, three, and then over half of 14. Oops, half of 14, which is seven. And that would actually bring me to the midpoint. So I'll go up 3 and over 7. And so my midpoint is the ordered pair, negative 1, 1. Now, if you didn't have a graph, there is a formula that we use, the midpoint formula. So if I were to take negative 8, negative 2, that's point A, and point B, which is at 6, 4, now we're to label those x1, y1, my first x point, my second, or my first y point, and x2, y2, my first, or my second x coordinate, and my second y coordinate, the midpoint can be found by taking the average of the x's. So negative 8 plus, negative 8 plus 6 over 2, and negative 2 plus 4 over 2. And that would end up giving us negative 2 over 2 and 2 over 2, which is negative 1, 1, which is the same midpoint we got right there. Now, the actual formula I used there, um, you know, the way I did it, um, the actual formula that you see written out is x2 minus x1 over 2 comma, y2 minus y1. 
over 2. Excuse me, not minus, but plus. You're finding the average of the values. Okay, I got myself mixed up with the distance formula for a second. So you're adding your x's. So really, I added x1 plus x2, but it doesn't matter the order here. As long as you add the x's, negative 8 plus 6 divided by 2, or you could have done 6 plus negative 8 divided by 2. Either way, you get negative 2. And negative 2 plus 4 divided by 2, or 4 plus negative 2 divided by 2. And you get 2 over 2, which is 1. That is the midpoint formula there. So let's write a little neater for you. There it is, the midpoint formula. That's if you're given two coordinates. Just label them like we did there and plug them in. All right. Now, the other thing that goes with that, it, with that is the distance formula. So I have my same line there and my same point, A and B. And so the same coordinates, negative 8, negative 2, and 6, 4. And we can go through the same process. Um, You'll notice this is a right triangle, so most of you remember the Pythagorean theorem. Uh, this is 6, this is 14. So if we think of this as like the Pythagorean theorem, a squared plus b squared equals c squared, you think a squared here is 36, b squared is 196, 14 squared, and so c squared has to be 36 plus 196 which would be a grand total of 234. So this length is just the square root of that, square root of 234, which we could we could look to end up uh, simplifying there, but I'm not going to bother doing that right now. The other route to go is to actually do the distance formula. And the distance formula is, is derived from the Pythagorean theorem. We say, well, if I if I change that up and say c squared is equal to a squared plus b squared, and then I start doing some math here, and I go, well, a squared is just this length. Well, this length, or this length, um, depending on which one you want to call a squared, for, this, for our purposes, we'd have to call this a squared, because if I kind of follow it down, a squared is the length on the x-axis. It's the distance on the x-axis. So we could say, well, I'm going to take x2 and subtract x1 from it and square it. Notice x2 minus x1, if I were to call this x2 and the 6 over here, let me rewrite that coordinate, 6, 4. If we were to call that x1, well, from negative 8, negative 8 minus 6 ends up giving me, so negative 8 minus 6 ends up giving me 14. And 14 squared is 196, excuse me, gives me negative 14. And negative 14 squared is 196. Okay, so really, this a squared is the same as saying that right there. And b squared is kind of the same as saying, if I go from here on the y-axis, we're going to go from negative 2 all the way up to here on the y-axis, which is 4. So we're taking y2, and we're going to subtract y1, and that's going to be my distance there. So I'm going to say y2 minus y1. So I'm going to go from negative 2 all the way up to 4, and that would give me a distance of negative 6. And negative 6 squared happens to be 36. And so we still kind of have that 36 and 196. And then the c squared just kind of carries down. Okay, well, when we're dealing with the distance formula, you're actually calling that c squared, we change it to what's called d for distance. All right? And rather than having the squared Rather than having the squared right there, we end up putting a big square root on this side. We undo that squaring by taking the square root of both sides. So by taking the square root of this side and the square root of the other side, we undo that squared. So really we can kind of think of it like this. 
square root's gone, which gets rid of that squared symbol. So the distance ends up being this formula right here. That is your actual distance formula. And that's how it kind of relates to the Pythagorean theorem. Okay? And so in this case, we'd end up with d is equal to the square root of 234 again, but using a coordinate versus using necessarily having to use a picture. So if I just knew that coordinate and that coordinate, I could use the distance formula. All right, that's all there is to it.